team, five shots fired, four down at the high school at Marshall. Marshall County High School active shooter. People down, one unresponded to the shooter still on. As far as they know, it's one shooter. He is still on scene. They've got everybody responding. They know for sure at this time four people are down, one is unresponsive in the comms. The news comes to us out of a small town in Kentucky, very near land between the lakes, where shots rang out at a high school this morning. The deadly attack happened in Benton, Kentucky, west of Katie's. That's not too far from Murray or Paducah, Kentucky. A gunman opened fire this morning at Marshall County High School, and at least one person is dead. Several others have been hurt. Reports from the scene indicate the person who died is a student and that as many as seven people have been injured. Sky 5 is also there, and this is some of the video they're sending back to us right now. Minutes ago, we saw a dozen school buses likely taking uninjured students who were at school to another location. Kentucky's governor says he is in shock and that it's just unbelievable this would happen in such a small close-knit community. Governor Matt Bevan is asking residents to come alongside each other in support and prayer. Again, at least one dead at this school shooting in Benton, Kentucky. They ran from the school and this is the first structure they saw when they were leaving the school um, to find safety. Me personally, I have a, a freshman that's here at the, at the high school. I just dropped her off and was about a mile from the school. I can tell you that that phone call will be one that I'll never forget. Her words, Daddy, there's been a shooting. Three helicopters have now got to campus. Three, three helicopters are here now. That's we're in the, in the security building here at the edge of campus. And I say we because we got three. We got three students in here that ran from ran from the school. When, when I when I got here when I got here they were taking the students to their to safe areas on campus. Um, as a parent my first thing to do was find my kid just like I'm sure many of you were wanting to do. Right now they're wanting parents to um, please let them work the area. Um, I did get to my daughter. And walked her to the safe area. And from that point on, I'll honestly say I don't remember a whole lot of what's happened. But again, what she told me was, Daddy, there's been a shooting. And I heard it. watching multiple ambulances come in from the area. I've seen um, Livingston County ambulance, ambulances from Paducah. Of course all of Marshall County is here. State Police, law enforcement from Marshall and Benton. And then I have seen some students that were out in the football area, football stadium area, load a bus and leave. I don't know about the students in the other safe areas. Um, one thing where my daughter was taken to. Again, three helicopters have just arrived here at at campus at Marsh County Hot School.
I personally have seen a couple of students taken, taken into an ambulance. In the room with me now, um, three students that ran for shelter and the guard building here, security building here at the entrance to Marshall County High School is where they came to and that's where I am with them at the moment. Two sophomores and a junior. Um, two of those were in the school. One of them was on her way at the school. I dropped my daughter off around 7.55, and I want to say it around 8 o'clock is when I got the call from her. Uh, she was in the commons area at the time. I think it was near the commons area or in the commons area of the high school where this happened. She was actually in the in the commons area at the time and she tells me she didn't see what happened but she did hear what happened at that time when she called me to say daddy there's been a shooting she said she heard multiple shots but that's just coming from students again I'm not sure um, that, that's not been told to me by anyone in the authority here. Inside the room here again with some students. They're texting, checking on friends, calling, talking on for talking to friends to check in, just trying to find out um, if everyone's okay. Some of their friends have told them that they were witnesses to this. Um, the area of the school that they were in there would have been a, a lot of students there this morning. That's it's called the commons area. That's where everyone gathers in the mornings in between class, central location of the high school. And that's where uh, I'm being told by students that it happened either in the commons area or near the commons area. As I ran from the safe area where my daughter was to um, back over to this side of the building because I've been told that this was the um, location um, of the shooting. Um, lots of students fleeing from the building. Um, many were walking down Highway 68. And the administration did a good job of getting them and getting them back into the safe areas. Um, but uh, things that I saw along the way uh, made it obvious that the students were running out, not thinking about what, where they were going or what they needed to do. Books, bags, things um, dropped, thrown off. All around campus. questions of the students here still not going to um, show their identity 
um, just because um, I haven't talked to the parents to find out um, to get permission for that. Or, but I just want to ask you, if you want to just step up here near me, I'm not going to have you tell your name or anything, but as we're looking here um, to, what, um, to what you're covering. And today, I uh, obviously have a, a personal connection to this because my daughter was in the school at the time of the shooting. My daughter was, by her account, in the commons area where the shooting happened. And um, we normally get to school about 7.50, about 7.55 this morning. Dropped her off, gave her a kiss. I love you, like many others have done this morning. Just minutes later, I hadn't made it more than a mile down the road, she was calling back, saying, Daddy, there's been a shooting. Things have slowed down a little bit around here. Book bags, um, gym bags. Yeah, they're going to send somebody over to get y'all to stand tight. Thank you. How you doing? Yeah, right there. Evacuating, I mean, there's students leaving. Is that what you're hearing? I don't know. They're busing. I don't know. Hey, my car right there. Can I leave? Daddy. Um, they're getting, they're going to have somebody come over here and get us. So I'll let you know what car I'm in and you follow, okay? okay? Yeah, phone calls uh, had an official here come in and say that um, they're going to have these students um, get on some buses probably with some other students uh, right now they have to stay here they're making phone calls to their their family right now to let them know that uh, they'd be they will be leaving These are live pictures from Vanderbilt Medical Center as another of the Kentucky school shooting victims is landing. Vanderbilt's going to have three of the victims so far and they're possibly expecting a fourth. Fox 17 has got complete coverage on our website, fox17.com. This is the helicopter, medical helicopter landing right now at Vanderbilt Medical Center. We expect at least one patient is on board. Final victim being brought here to Mandible Medical Center as a result of the Kentucky High School shooting. Being brought here to Mandible Medical Center by a helicopter. We all are here to discuss an event that took place at the Marshall County High School in Western Kentucky. And um, before we get into some of those basic facts, um, I'm going to introduce to you um, the governor of our Commonwealth, Matt Bevin. He's he's taking the leadership and upon himself to to get on a plane and come down here to the scene uh, and take a vested personal interest into seeing what's going on. and And I want to turn it over to him. And we have a, a unified front of federal and and state and local partners with us today um, that will speak to you briefly. And we will try to give you the the best details that we can at this time keeping in mind that we have an ongoing criminal investigation um, and a, a large crime scene 
which we, we must take into account, and we have to be very prudent in how we release this information so as not to jeopardize the, the integrity of this investigation going forward. So without further ado, uh, the Governor of the Commonwealth, Matt Bevin. Thank you. Appreciate it. This is what I would ask of those of you in the media in addition to what was just noted. This is going to be a fair amount of factual information that we will provide to you. It will be all the facts that we are able to share at this time that are known to be fact, that are germane to the interest that you have. But I want to reiterate, and you'll hear it reiterated again, this is an ongoing investigation, and we run the risk of certain information compromising that information. So bear in mind that while there will be many questions you may have that will not be answered during the course of this short conversation with you, we know there are questions. We may or may not even have the answers to those or have the ability or liberty to share the answers to those. Everything that is possible to be shared and is known to be fact will be shared with you in the next moments. When we are done, there will not be questions because any information that is possible to share will have already been shared with you. I would ask out of respect for the families involved and for this community, for the gentlemen behind me and those that they represent that will be involved in this ongoing investigation, that you respect the process, that you respect the need for us to make sure that things are done in a very accurate manner. And so with that said, let me tell you what we do know and what is, what is able to be reported at this time. As would note, was noted, this occurred this morning. The exact timeline will be discussed by the commissioner in a moment. It occurred at the Marshall County High School. At this time, there are 19 individuals who have, are being treated or have been treated for injuries. 14 of those are gunshot wounds. Five of those are non-gunshot wound related injuries. Of the 14 who have received gunshot wounds, two have passed away. One was a decedent at the scene. That student was a 15-year-old female. A second student, also 15 years old, a male, passed away at the hospital. Students were taken to multiple hospitals, local and regional hospitals. Six of them were flown to the nearest level one trauma center. One of the decedents, the male, passed away at that center. There are five other students, as best we know, at that center. Five we know for fact. We're trying to determine that every one of those that has been shot was a student. It is our belief that they are. In terms of other information that's able to be shared with you at this time, the shooter was a student, a 15-year-old male. That student is in custody. That student was apprehended at the scene. That student was apprehended in a nonviolent apprehension. That student will be charged with both murder and attempted murder. The specifics and details of that, some of which uh, is being developed right now, are not able to be shared as to exactly the time, but that is the process that you can anticipate will be unfolding in the hours ahead. Those are the basic facts. It is heartbreaking, and I will say this before I hand this off to the Commissioner. I beg of you again, respect the fact that these children belong to this community and to specific families in this community. And this is a wound that is going to take a long time to heal. And for some in this community, will never fully heal. That is going to take a process of time and respect. And I'm asking you, please, to respect these families. The families who have lost their children have, in fact, been notified. It is intentional that we are not releasing any names of any involved 
at this time. That information will come out. This is an opportunity for Kentucky, while we would not want to be in this position, or whether this community or whether this specific town or this specific high school would want to be in this position. This is an opportunity for us to show how these situations can be handled. The respect, the love, the sticking to the facts and allowing the process to proceed. I'm just asking you please have respect for these families and for this community. These are the tragic things that happen. There's no good answer for it. There's a thousand hypotheses we're not going to go into. But there are ways we can be prepared for this. And the commissioner is going to speak to some of the specific things that were done that allowed us to be as expeditiously on top of this as was the case. Final thing I'll say is this. While there's a handful of us that are standing here, there are so many first responders in this community who deserve extraordinary credit for their timeliness, for their effectiveness, their professionalism at every turn starting in the moments immediately after this occurred, who have ensured that this was not a more painful situation than it already is. And I am grateful to those first responders. I know that speaking for the sheriff specifically, he wanted to make sure that it was known how critically involved these folks were. And I thank you for everything that you've done. And I want to turn things over now for some of the specifics of timeline and response and what people can do with follow-up information to our commissioner for the Kentucky State Police, Rick Sanders. Thank you, Governor. And good afternoon. I'm here to tell you some times and specifics, but not to go too specific to top possibly jeopardize our case. What we do know is when the bell rang, the first responders showed their best. People from city, state, federal agencies have all called to offer their assistance and have all come to this location to help. The incident began at 7.57 a.m. when a 15-year-old student armed with a handgun entered the high school and started shooting. At 7.59 a.m., the first 911 call came in. At 8.06 a.m., first responders arrived at the high school. I'll also note there was an SRO at the school when this occurred. And I will also note that the students at that school did exactly as they were trained. The Kentucky State Police has been in this area recently teaching students and faculty how to respond to an active shooter situation. And everybody in that high school reacted appropriately. As the governor said, there were a total of 14 shot. <coughs> one female had died at the scene, one male died at the hospital. A tragic day for all of us. Right after the shooting occurred, I got a call. We responded. I also got a call from the FBI special agent in charge, Amy Hess, offering her assistance to us, helping us process this high school scene. We have also been joined by the ATF who've offered their assistance. We've been joined by a number of police departments throughout the area, sending people here to help the Sheriff's Department to respond to calls. So we're all joined together in a professional manner to, to process this scene. There's a lot yet to be done. There are a lot of witnesses to be interviewed, and we're not gonna get into specifics at this time. But those are the, the, the calls that came in that's how it was responded to. The investigation right now is being conducted by the state police, critical incident response team, and the FBI. And ATF is here as well. We're processing the scene. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done. I would ask that anybody that is a witness to this to not talk to the media, but to talk to us first. Anybody that has information and has not talked to the Kentucky State Police, I would ask you to contact us and give us the information that you have. There's a lot to be done. It's going to be a long few days, and I ask for your patience. 
When we can release additional information, we will, but we don't want to do anything to hamper the prosecution. I will tell you the 15-year-old is being going to be charged with murder and attempted murder, and we're working with the authorities now to proceed with those charges. Thank you for being here. Again, it's a tragic day for all of us. I would just assure you of one thing. We in law enforcement will do our job and do it well. And we will pray for the families that are affected by this today. And I make a promise to them that we will do this in the best manner possible. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Governor. Um, more information will come forth uh, as it becomes available. Obviously, this is a, a very dynamic crime scene uh, that requires a lot of examination, and it, it's, it's developing over a period of time. And we will keep you informed as uh, developments become available. Um, I'm not sure if there will be another press conference uh, or, or what time that will be, but here within a few hours, we will contact you to let you know when the next time will be with more information. Uh, Trooper Jody Cash is the public affairs officer in this area. He's doing a wonderful job of uh, staying in touch with most of you. And then and obviously I'm a Lieutenant Webb and you can contact my office as well. Um, I would just like for you to keep in mind um, as we go forward, as this information comes out and you report to please just respect the families and, uh, of, the, of, the, of the folks that have been involved here. Uh, keep in mind their privacy and what they're going through. And um, this is something that has struck in the heart of Kentucky, um, and it, it's not far away. It's here, and it, it hits home. I have a 15-year-old daughter, and I, I think about that. Um, we have two 15-year-old high school students that have been killed just showing up to go to school, uh, and how tragic that is. It, could, it doesn't get any worse than that. And so I'd ask that you would uh, keep that in mind as, as you report uh, with the privacy of the families, and, and keep in mind the responders and the investigators as well. Uh, what they've seen and, and what they're going through and they continue to go through so that's all we have um, okay um, the the suspect uh, excuse me the accused at this at this time uh, we are continuing to investigate um, him we are looking into his home and, and details with him and he was apprehended uh, by the sheriff's department here on site at the school thankfully before any more lives could be taken and this this situation was disruptive there's no way to know uh, at this point uh, how much farther it would have went um, but at this time that's all the information that we have uh, and there's there's really nothing else to elaborate on and I appreciate your all's concern and your attendance here today there will be more information coming thank you thank you all